up everybody it's your favorite second in a row's favorite nerd and today we are going to look at the mdlx optimus prime from 3.0 this is their like smaller scale highly articulated non-transforming action figure line i got their bumblebee and it was amazing and then it was actually gifted to me which shouldn't have been done but it was and today brian m i'm gonna call him brian the samurai because i think his ig name has samurai in it for the patreon folks the same dude that sent me the Diggum smacks cup he sent this to me to take a look at and i do appreciate the offer because i am kind of excited about the line i think it's a great action figure space good scale etc etc so i want to take a look at them but in order to do so we need to take a look at accessories so first and foremost, he comes with a wide array of hands. We have left and right trigger fans, left and right matrix holding hands, left and right fist hands, left and right posing hands, left and right pointing hands with two fingers, which is a new touch, but I like it. All of that is in addition to the two holding hands that you saw in the opening footage, all decoed the same way, which we will talk about once we get to the figure. He comes with an axe, very stylized, but very cool. Silver paint, I, it actually might even be silver dry brushing over black paint, and then... Uh, the orange translucent plastic that he holds fairly well in his holding hand. Not perfectly, as you can see, but fairly well. Of course, he comes with this signature uh, cannon here, and it is, once again, with this gunmetal paint throughout, which is nice. Probably would have looked good with some kind of accents along the way, but it is what it is. It still looks nice, and he can hold it just fine in his trigger hand. He comes with his jetpack. Um, we have the gunmetal paint there and there, as well as the same sort of deco that you see throughout the figure, which we will talk about shortly. And that just plugs in simply onto his back. And he comes with his matrix. We have the gold paint, the silver paint, and the glossy blue. Um, kind of typical, but it's, it's definitely their own little take on it. He can hold it kind of in his uh, matrix holding hand. I'm guessing a lot of this is about balance. You can also take off the chest, which is magnetized and put the matrix in his chest and then add it back on and let's take a look at the figure and get tight on the head skull for dennis so i gotta be honest i'm not crazy about the eyes head sculpt i dig in general just something about the eyes seems off to me paint is beautiful though we have blue with weathering of silver on top we also have inking along the blue to create the black line work we have silver paint on the face and on the neck the head is on a ball peg from the head to the neck, and then the neck is on a ball peg from the neck into the chest. Using both, you can get the head up a decent bit, down a good, a good bit, side to side swivels no problem, and then confused prime look. Continuing on with the chest, we'll drop the camera down just to taste. Um, we have a ball peg uh, at the waist. I thought it might be two, but it's just at the waist from the abdomen into the pelvis. And we have a hinge. No, actually, that might be a ball peg. I just can't tell because of the tolerance. Um, my initial gut reaction was double ball peg, ball peg, ball peg. But uh, I'm not entirely sure. Either way, using both, you get him over a fair bit, back a good bit, teapot, and swivel. Uh, the paint is fully from top to bottom there. The red, the gray. Um, light black inking throughout to try to create the space and line work amongst it, which looks good. Yellow accents on the marker lights. All that stuff looks good. All right. Shoulders. We have the Autobot symbol on there. We also have a... Wow. So we have a double ball peg from the shoulder, from the chest into the shoulder, and then an additional hinge where the ball peg connects, which gets you the arm out to there, which is nice. Um, let's see, what do we do here? How does that work? There, and then it collapses back in. So it all houses inside the shoulder, <clears throat> which is pretty clever stuff. Also where the ball peg fits in, the whole housing moves for a butterfly joint, which is nice as well. The smokestacks are painted and as is the red with some weathering along the lines and line work done inside. Bicep swivel. Double jointed elbow that gets you the full run. And then we have this bit. It's a little loose. I'm not sure if it's the same tolerance here. Yeah. So I think that's meant to just kind of fall down and let gravity cover down on the joint. Silver paint on the accents underneath. Wrists are on ball pegs. So you'll get the swivel a little bit up down, a little bit in out. We'll back out now. Brush them for the whole figure. Hips. 
We have the pelvis pieces. These uh, hip skirts are on little ball pegs. You can rotate them out of the way. We have the hip skirts in the rear that come around and form up there. So you can use either one to kind of allow your empty space to get access to your hips, which are ball pegs that are basically on drop downs, which is weird. Um, actually, I guess they're double ball pegs, technically. Um, it's not that it doesn't work, though, because it does work. It's just not what I've, I would have expected. And full Van Dam. Forward. Oh, that's just a ball peg, so that'll be repaired. Uh, full Monty, uh, given that this, this piece here doesn't pop out. Uh, let's see here. If we can't. There it is. Um, thigh swivel. You can see the drop down on the ball peg there. It's an interesting way to do it. I'm just not sure that I would have done it that way. But I'm not making toys, so what can I say? Silver paint for the thighs as well as the line work done inside. Double jointed. No, no, I'm sorry. It's just a single jointed knee. Um, on the back here, you had this spring loaded piece. That'll get pushed in by the thigh so you can get the full run. And the joint is completely decoed, um, both in sculpt and paint. Side bits are painted. Weathering throughout. Nice, tight, like silver dry brush weathering. Um, Gunmetal paint inside of the vents here. We have these, which are on little ball pegs that can get up and out of the way for your feet. The feet themselves are on, I feel like a double ball peg. Yes which gets your an ankle tilt up along with a toe tilt, which helps an ankle tilt down and then a rocker that uh, this flat moving helps a bit, but not a ton, um, but it does help a bit. And there he is from the back, you know, excluding the, the, uh, the backpack, obviously. So decent figure. Not, I'm not quite as smitten with him as I was with Bumblebee, um, but still, I mean, probably... Uh, you know, the greatest of his, like, scale, you know, and certainly of his price point, given the scale. It's not a bad offering. Size comparison-wise, I just wanted to let you know what he looked like next to, like, a six-inch figure, like a standard six-inch figure. So he'll sit a little higher. You know, if six inches kind of like their, like, iron hide size, maybe. I don't know what they have planned, but, like, I think it could look really nice in the end, how they have them all planned. And then, you know, size comparison wise, properly, there he is with the Bumblebee from the line. And I, I just think the Bumblebee has a little bit more of an original character to him where the Prime seems more like a straight Prime. Um, the Bumblebee seems like it's a little bit more three zeros take on Bumblebee. And the Prime seems like, I don't know, a little bit more paint by numbers. Doesn't make it bad, just makes it a little less unique than I felt like the Bumblebee was. Moving on to final thoughts, I'm not crazy about the eye sculpt. Something seems a little bit off with it, and it seems like a minor gripe because the rest of the sculpt is so beautiful. The eye sculpt does throw a lot off. I also wish there was more of an ankle rocker. Like, as you can see here, like, I just kind of, you know, I could probably mess with this a bit more and create something that was, you know, okay, but I wish I could get more of an extreme pose out of him. I'm also not crazy about these. Um... I don't think that they're super effective. The ankle cover down pieces, they always seem like they're just floating in space. They never seem to kind of like rock down and settle into the figure. But honestly, I mean, that's about it. Positives wise, the sculpt is pretty much fantastic. 99.9% .9 through. The paint is amazing. It's marvelous. It's beautiful. The joints are tolerance fairly well. I guess the overuse of double ball pegs without the use of like ratcheted universals and stuff isn't the best either. I probably should have mentioned that in my critiques. But it's still a well-built figure that works extremely well given what they chose to use engineering wise. It comes with the appropriate accessories to include a slew of hands that offer a ton of options for posing. It has a good display presence. So yeah, it's a recommend for me, just maybe not as strong as their Bumblebee offering. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.